source to actually start getting involved and looking a bit deeper into the subject to see what else is offered within the free and open source community for them. Um, and before I get up on my soapbox, Roy, hopefully you've got something else to, to bring up for the, uh, for the one, show. One, one thing I could try and do is to plug in one of the tracks that I have, but I do have to try and go through a list of the previous things. So I've been accumulating them for several months now, uh, and we never really get to use them too often. Uh, it takes quite a bit of effort. So the next one I'm going to play, it's uh, When Are We Going to Do It Again? Or When Are We Going to Do It? by It's called Linus of Hollywood. So that was Roy's selection. Um, I'll apologise in advance if you're expecting uh, death metal, because I know uh, the majority of you uh, prefer my death metal choices than Roy's uh, Roy's musical tastes. <laughs> but well, uh, my musical taste is very much affected what's available in the uh, license that I can use. See, I'm, so, I'm a, so I'm at a disadvantage, Roy, because you see, I don't hear your track until afterwards when we finish the show and I play the. Um, I haven't heard your music right there. Remember you, before oh. I told your uh, library story, the Dora one. Yes, you did. Yes. It's <laughs> testament to people. We don't plan any of the show. We don't train over links, and we have this consensual thing where we basically say before the show we don't talk about the issues we'll bring up because otherwise it can ruin things, or we might forget what we have said and haven't said. And, and it it also makes it unrealistic the conversation because we'll chat in a, yeah. in a way that is pre-planned. So yeah, 
So, so this is a, a very kind of one of the. I don't think we're alone in doing it like that, but I know some shows that basically have show notes and they have links laid out and they kind of know what they have to go through. Look at this beforehand. So, no different. Uh, one of the ones that I hate when I watch uh, YouTube, no, no, I don't really hate them, I think it makes good videos, is people basically slicing down the videos every like 10 seconds. So, all the videos just basically, the, the face just bumps every 10 seconds. And so, I assume that they, every 10 seconds, they do it like so many times until they get lines right and then kind of stick them together. And it takes them like a day to just make a small video. And when I, I do a video for YouTube, I just basically do, do it straight in. You know, I just do the first one. I don't think what I'm going to talk about. And I just go and speak. Because I, I don't know, I don't know if you'll agree with me. And I think we had some disagreement with, uh, past people on the show. Uh, we, we basically, as soon as it becomes a chore where we have to do a show and spend like five hours doing things over and over again, and for me, especially editing at the end, you know, having to go through, you know, do we put this in and do we remove this and remove that? It's it's just becoming too much of a chore, and I, I, I worry that if we did try and make things so cumbersome, we, we would lose interest in doing so. So we basically say up front that we... I think it wouldn't be so bad if we if we released once a month. However, the problem is in the tech world is very quickly we'd be speaking about subjects that are out of uh, that, that aren't up to date. I mean, even now we've covered some topics which currently are relatively new. When the show comes out, either late tonight or or tomorrow, they're going to be subjects which are going to be discussed uh, for hours on end um, prior to the show's release. So, it's the only way around that is a is a live show, um, which I think kind of if I can just add, the Linux Outlaws are doing very well with their live shows. In fact, I go as far to say that I think their live shows are better than their pre-recorded ones. Um, the spontaneity and the creativity that they're having to use on doing a live show, I think, makes the the show more interesting to listen to and uh, cer- certainly more informative. I don't know if you had. Have you been listening to the Linux Outlaws recently, Roy? Not live. No. I do listen to it's, the show quite normally. I quite enjoy their yeah. show as well. I mean, they're, they're very good with a live show. I, I must say, they are. Um, they've done. They work very well together. I think the chemistry is uh, undisputed. So, um, no, it, it does work very well. And certainly, the, the spontaneity of having to come up with material on the spot without any takes and retakes, etc., uh, it's yeah. it does well, credit to we'll the show. We do after 220 shows. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, so, it's so we've uh, improved if people listen to the first few shows. It was uh, it was a different experience. Uh, also, we didn't have tracks. We didn't have the same audio quality. If you recall the first few episodes, people had some issues uh, getting the audio in decent quality, decent uh, file size, and all kinds of stuff like that. But now it's mostly uh, it's mostly a routine thing, so we can both be pretty quickly, hopefully. Well, let's just. Um Let's just throw a few things in that uh, haven't been prepared. It's just literally just coming to my head, and I think it might be a bit of fun. We're hitting, we've hit the middle of the year, uh, mid 2011. Now that date doesn't mean anything to the vast majority of people listening to this show. In fact, it probably won't mean anything to anybody. Um, but it certainly means something to me because uh, I think it was about November last year. Uh, myself, Roy, and Gordon at the time offered some predictions, um, and one of my predictions was that Steve Balmer would be gone by mid-2011, and I have to say that it's now mid-2011, and he's still not gone. I'm allowing myself, um, which I hope people will indulge me, to the end of July for my prediction to come true. I think if he left before the end of July, I think people would forgive me and say, yes, you were pretty damn accurate with your prediction last November. Um, but talking of which, I thought just halfway through the year, it might be nice for a couple of predictions for this time I'll next year. I'll tell you one year. thing. You, you aren't too far uh, in the sense that he was being pressured recently to resign by several people very close to the company too. And last week, it was, he was, I think, let me just think about the source. I think it was the Seattle Times which attended the, game, the, the the place, and they re, he reportedly started shouting at the crowd uh, in a very embarrassing <laughs> kind of way. Uh, you know, I, Steve, I, Steve Ballmer embarrassing, never. <laughs> no, he, he's, uh, I think he's doing it almost intentionally, but he's a bit crazy since he's doing the basketball coaching like thing. But uh, he he was basically starting to shout to defend himself because he he feels threatened by he, he gets all this. Uh, you know, you don't see people calling down, calling for resignation of Steve Jobs or, uh, or his financial advisor, I think Cook is his name, uh, who was the person who would kind of sit instead of, you know, when he would go to surgery. I think that's the person who would usually take, uh, responsibility as a, uh, as a sort of a hair. But the, the thing is that happened today is one of the, uh, senior vice presidents in Microsoft, uh, 
leaves the company. Uh, he claims it to be for like retirement or star startup, but he doesn't seem to be intruding any other company in the same way that Stephen Elop is doing now. So he yes. seems to be just really 